would they think I'm a lady boy upstairs down here? I'm a man, girl. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's I sell kitty books. I'm sick, you cynical son of a bitch. <laughs> Tell him, Steve Dave. Hello, and welcome to this week's edition of Tell him, Steve Dave, with Walt. Hello. With Q. Hello. With Ming Chen. Hello. With me, Bry, and two special guests who we don't see that often around these parts anymore since they've gone west in search of fortune and fame. Kevin J. <laughs> How are you, man? Good to be back. I don't usually deal with that sort of nonsense here. I know. It's much more, it's weird. You guys are a much more, uh, low key podcast. I went back and listened to, um, we were putting together these books. And so I, I we were, I was like, you know what? Do she, the book that tell him Steve Dave should have, we're doing transcripts of the podcast, putting them into hardcover and softcover. There's very little, <laughs> very little. <laughs> I said the first book that we should do of Tom Steve Dave is the whole making hay series. And Ming was like, yeah, making hay. Um, and it made me go back and listen to it. And you guys have a, such a subtle low key show. <laughs> you know, it's, it's almost like if you, if the show had a pulse, it would be like, Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. And, you know, it's just there's a pace to it, man. And we're used to now, we do the morning radio thing. So we're used to like, hey, it's bus news, man. Hey, everybody, it's fucking the naked news. You know, it's I just know, like. I've heard that. I've heard it. It's news, news, news. And he oh. sings for a good 45 seconds to yeah. a minute. <laughs> Basically. Like mm -hmm. You don't like the theme song. No, I, I love the theme song. I love news news. I tune in. Nice. It's high energy. <laughs> we keep it. <laughs> Way high energy, man. But but uh, you guys have a much more mellow vibe here. Mm -hmm. So you guys are going to take over for us uh, while we go away. Muse is going to Winnipeg next week uh, to work on Todd and the Book Imperial. And I'm going to Italy for a week with the family. There's a red state uh, screening at this Terramina Film Festival. And then I'm just going to, like, I've never been there, so I'm taking the whole family. So we've been doing Sir, as you know, <laughs> uh, a, a Smodcast Internet Radio from our house. Every morning, it's uh, me and Jen doing uh, plus one per diem from 8 a.m. till 10. Then me and Muse do Jay and Silent Bob get jobs from 10 till noon. So now both of us are going to be out of the country. Nobody's going to be able to cover the, the show. So you guys. Except. Will, yes, you guys finally. Because ever since we started, everybody on Twitter was just like, they must do a radio show. Why aren't the Tesdy boys? Tell them Steve Dave. Why aren't the Tesdy boys doing a radio show in the morning? And I was like, we'll get there. We'll get there. I don't know about these two, but I knew you would commit sooner or later. Like you're, you were born for fucking morning radio and stuff like that. Walter, a little too sleepy for morning radio. <laughs> but you definitely. He's committed though. I'll do the overnight shift. Yeah, that's right. Walter's like fucking Howard. Oh What's his name? Uh, the, the night bird. Yes. <laughs> Allison, <laughs> Allison Steele. <laughs> um, the, uh, it's Walt with you playing some cool jams. Yeah, he's like, here, <laughs> spinning the platters that matter. <laughs> <laughs> and what matters are these platters? The, uh, so you guys are going to have to take over for us, hopefully, uh, while we're gone. But I think it'd be awesome because uh, it, it's, number one, we won't miss any airtime. Somebody will be filling in, and it's you guys, and, and it'll test you out for – to do your own like morning radio from here because the way we got the network set up you could literally just do it right from your gear right from this setup and dump it into the network and boom you're broadcasting like like this morning very radio. poker table this very <laughs> very uh decorated poker table as walt points out looks like the grave of um jim morrison just a lot of and there's also a body underneath Mm -hmm. Oh my god! And his dick <laughs> <Ming. laughs> <laughs> Um So you guys can can you do the? Do you think you'll be able to handle morning? Like, I think so. Yeah, Ming and I have been talking. We got some plans. Is it you and Ming going to do it? Me, uh, Ming and I are the first day, and Walt's going to jump in, and right then on. Q will join in That's in the days when we do early. Because Quinn, are you working? Are you at the firehouse? Is that Mon the reason I can't do Monday is I'm at the firehouse. Mm -hmm. uh, but Tuesday through Friday, I'm. He's kicking it Jamaican style. He's got like nine jobs going right now. <laughs> yeah, man, you're spending a lot of plates. What are you up to? Uh, not well. Walt doesn't count the podcast, so we could take that plate off. Uh, firehouse. If I, count, if I count the podcast, I have like fucking fifteen tasks and jobs. <laughs> what are they? 
two two podcasts, right. Puck Nuts, right. if you kind of count Puck I count nuts. them. I don't. <laughs> Ming does. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was drawing them for a book. Right. I was doing work in here. Right. I was a father. Everything a is husband. inside. If, you're, if your family lived here, <laughs> <laughs> everything would be in like a 16-foot radius. <laughs> Uh, so you're busy. I, I get. Um, but, but I don't not try and take though. it away. But they're not like jobs, though. What's not a job? Podcasting. Uh, no, I run. If you take it away, it's a TV show and the, the that one's house. that's a legitimate. Right. My other TV show. I'll give it to you, Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and, uh, the firehouse. So I guess that's two plates. But but big plates. Right. It takes a lot of spinning. They're not bread plates. Those are full size dinner yeah, plates. Yeah, you know, it's like on. pizza platters going on over there. Mm-hmm. There, uh, I've noticed on Twitter in the the uh, Bry Walt uh, Q uh, uh, Twitter address. There used to be for a while. There was a like twenty uh, percent less Q, thirty percent less Q. No yeah. more. It's gone. No. Now they look for more Q. Yeah, Walt stop no. posting. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's a lack of options at this point. <laughs> right. It's Q or nothing. I guess. What uh, for those that don't know, man? Like uh, I've known these cats for years. I've known Brian and and Walter since. Post high school, like the high school friends that I hung out with and I split up at graduation, kind of. I've been going out with this chick for a while and they start going out with other chicks as well. And um, eventually we just stopped hanging. Eventually we were just like, we like girls better than each other. And so uh, that was right at the end of senior year. And so I was kind of like friendless. Now and it's then come I'm, full circle. We all like each other better than the girls. Than the girls. <laughs> now we're back to that point. But I, uh, I eventually, me and that chick broke up and then I was kind of hanging out with nobody and I started hanging out with these cats. I met Walter at the recreation center in Highlands, uh, the Bob Wilson, uh, recreation center where I was like working in this latchkey kid program, but he'd been there for a while and it took us about eight, nine months to have actually have a conversation. It It was weird. Like I worked with them every day. Like I'd literally come in and whatnot and be like, uh, Hey, anybody, Hey, you want to count this as a job? Do you? (laughs) Yeah. I was like, how many jobs you got? Not anymore. The, uh, but we never really talked until about eight, nine months in and we bonded oddly enough. It's so weird and fitting that we're in a comic book store. We bonded over Batman. Like I remember going, uh, after finally, after working there, after literally playing foosball at the same table with the man and never having a conversation beyond, Hey, Hey, finally one day I was just like, Hey, I hear you like comics. And he was like, huh, who told you that? <laughs> Did Brian tell you that? Yeah. Like all suspect. I'm like, hey, it's cool. I don't know. It's a guy. It's a guy. It's not going to be a trouble. Is he? And, uh, he was like, yeah, I do. And I was just like, I wrote this, uh, Batman report. When I was in uh, the senior year, I think last year was my last year, or the, no, it was junior. I was like, I wrote this Batman report junior year, man, where I was talking about this, that, or the other thing. I was like, I've always been a big Batman fan, and uh, he was like, Yeah, I, I, let me read it. Where I said, I, said I, I can't imagine you going, let me read it. I'm sure I was like, Do you want to read it? I was struggling for some As fucking recall, connection you with were, you. It was the um, there was a lot of hoopla coming about the upcoming Batman movie. Is that what it was? And you and you mentioned, are you excited to see it? And I was just, I was leery and apprehensive because I was like, it could be, you know, the Batman t- TV series because Keaton was involved. I thought you were leery and apprehensive that I asked you a question. <laughs> You're like, why is he asking me about could, Batman? Could what does he want to suck way. my dick? Is this a gay thing? <laughs> yeah, like Batman. What does that mean? What? Uh, I guess you're right. It was off of like the 89 Batman. The Tim Burton Batman was coming out. And so it was off of there. We started talking about that. And I said I'd written a report in high school. And I'm sure I'd crammed it down your throat. I doubt you. You had like, you said it. that you had mentioned a lot of Adam, you had referenced a lot of the Adam West. Yeah. I think I was like, well, if you, if you want to know like what's good Batman, you know, it wasn't the TV show. And I brought a, a book in for you to read. That two minutes after, two minutes I, after handing the report to Walt, you found it in the urinal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I went to take a leak. It was there right next to the hockey puck. I was like, Walt, uh, is this a copy? He was just like, that's why I store my shit. It's my file cabin. Um, and I dried it, it off. Good. I dried it off for a ha- under a hand dryer and then gave it back to him. And he's like, fine. You fucking read it. You brought it in the next day. And that's when you were like, there's way too much TV show Batman in here. This ain't Batman. You don't know enough Batman. He's like, I'm going to give you a book. <laughs> Chiding you now. <laughs> yeah. Go get your face back in that urinal. The urinal where the, where the paper was. He goes, I'm going to bring in the Dark Knight. And you can read that. And that's that's Batman. It's all right. And he gave me the Dark Knight Returns, the Frank Miller graphic novel. And I loved it. I mean, I'd read comics when I was younger. And I got out of them when I was in high school. As soon as I entered high school, I was like, fucking... There's no way I can still read Spider-Man. I'm going to be in high school. I want pussy now. Pussy, pussy. And then four years of high school, no pussy. But at the end of high school, comics Why did you think back. comics were going to stop that? I don't as know. Long as, you, as long as you didn't bring it back. Historically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, truly. Look, I'd had 
here, I based it on this simple thesis. I'd never gotten pussy and I read comics. <laughs> You're <laughs> blaming comics. That in the weight as well. <laughs> Ripping them up in anger. <laughs> the I'm not Tell them like, Girls, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> this is all that's holding me back. <laughs> Showing off his muscles. As he lifts them. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. I did kind of, didn't, uh, didn't you feel that? You never felt like, Hey man, uh, I you you've read comics in high school. Did you get away with it? I think it? it's because it takes people eight months to start a conversation with. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, that had nothing to do with. I it. never I probably didn't even know. I would never attribute my lack of success though to due to comics because that would be like how would anybody know? As lack, long as you kept it on the down low. Lack and, of success and, with ladies. Yeah, I wouldn't be like, oh, it's because of comics. Because <laughs> then what do you read them anyway? in the crawl space of his house. <laughs> <laughs> Later on, I'll be getting pussy. <laughs> As long, you know, I just always kept it as like, you know, no one knew about it, and that would, but that to me would. Be <laughs> you, you had a real like, don't ask. Yeah, it was like, don't ask, don't tell. He's like a don't ask, don't tell policy killer. And shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, I keep this separate from my real life. <laughs> this fantasy life with capes and cowls and shit. Um, it really, did nobody busted you? I try to keep it a secret even now, even though I work in it. Like, you know, I don't tell people <laughs> when I work in secret, secret here. town. Yeah, yeah, really. Like when I meet people out on like real people in real world situations, like at, at like school functions with my kids. Right. I'm a, I'm leery to tell them I manage a comic book store. Why? I just think they're going to be like clown. <laughs> what? They think you're a clown? Yeah. They're they're like, like you all disgusted. Like, like, you clown. And just walk like, away? It's not very like um, – He pretends he's a pimp instead. <laughs> 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 Bullying him. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a profession Girls, that leads to uh, res- like, you know, like, you know, like when you – oh, I'm an engineer or like, you know, I work on um, – Dude, it's led to a podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really, man. I just – I, I manage a store. I leave it at that. You don't go any further. Like, what kind of story? Like, you don't need to know. Uh, I don't. I really try as hard as I can not to. You're like, I'm in tra- waste management. <laughs> <laughs> He's trained himself to project hell vomit on people. <laughs> on you. Sprays mace in their eyes. <laughs> Do you think, uh, would your kids, uh, you've talked about, like, your daughters, or uh, they think it's cool that you work in a comic book store? Not at all. Nothing. Not at all. There's no aspect of like. The only thing they thought them. was cool about the, being at the comic store now is that Surf Taco uh, opened up next door. <laughs> I could bring it home for, for dinner on some nights. <laughs> they call you up more now. They're like, Dad. Oh, You're like, Yeah, yeah. I'm like, bring home tacos. <laughs> Guess what I sold tonight, girls? <laughs> no, Dad, no, no, no. Bring, bring us home a taco. <laughs> <laughs> they actually wish you worked at Surf Taco instead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can just tell people that you're an artist. I'm like, look, man, I draw books. You that's are just an artist. That's, that's just a recent right. though um, no, occurrence, no, though. Done a bunch of them. But it was He's not counting the ones he did with me. <laughs> but before that, though, before I could say that, though, I definitely wasn't like, you know, like jumping to the front of the line to when I introduced myself to other fathers at school to be like, tell them what I do now. One side, Mr. Engineer. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you're like, I'm slinging rocks. They're like, what's that mean? Like, crack. I deal crack like a man deals crack. So wait, what if your, what if your kids asked you to come for career day? Would you be like, no way? Because don't they do that? They bring like the the kids bring their father in or mother. But in, like to like, say that, yeah. my dad's a pilot. Well, but my, their mother is a teacher. You know, a respected um, field to uh, be involved in. You know, I sell kitty books. You know, I mean, it just sounds very funny. Yeah, very eyebrow raising. <laughs> What's your husband you do? What? Debbie? He's in the funnies. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, but, like it could be like an adult, new, like uh, newspaper boy almost. <laughs> yeah, he's in, he's in the delivery system. Hey, periodicals, <laughs> they come out weekly. They're like what, like Newsweek, Time, the Time <laughs> Warner family? <laughs> yes. Again, you can just say I sell sculptures. Could you sell statues and busts? I'm an art dealer. Yeah, yeah you're like I'm an art dealer, sculptor. curator, yeah, artist. <laughs> Intercontinental why don't you just say you're, un- dealer. Just say you're unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> you're like my wife works. I don't. <laughs> I've been on the dole for a while. Um, like, what day? Is it first of the month yet? <laughs> the uh, But you've been doing this for how many years you've been running the Secret Stash comic book store? Running it? Yeah. Or involved with it? Involved and running. You were even running it when you didn't commit since 97. Yeah. 97 is when we took over and it was on Mama Street in Red Bank. <laughs> <laughs> on another street. And then it took us a while to convince him to kind of go full time. When we came up to Broad Street, that's when you left the wreck for good yeah. and kind of came up here. So that was like 98, 98 is when we moved up here. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Well, that was like 99. Uh, well, we moved, well, nine, late in 98, though, the stuff all came up to this store. Right, right, right. Yeah. And, and then we opened, opened in 99. 99, January 99. Okay, so you've been 12 years manning this very location. Yes. And then last year, you jumped into comics in an even uh, deeper way for the big two. As Brian pointed out before, 
you have done comic books. You've drawn comic books. Brian has written comic books. You're both comic book professionals. Uh, you did War of the Undead. Uh, you did um, uh, uh, Carney mm -hmm. for IDW. And then last year, me and Walter started doing comics for DC. So we did a Batman book called Batman Cacophony, and then we're doing one we're still in the middle of called Batman Widening Gyre. So at that point, you're it's no longer like I sell funny books. You're well, like, I, well, I draw I and the, sell funny books. I going to the school functions after, you know. Right. <laughs> at after this you were point, banned. I'm not even attending them anymore. <laughs> you should go back. You're like, wait, wait, wait. I got another job. Let me try this one. I draw <laughs> Batman. <laughs> Um, but I've, uh, but that's where I met Walt is at the stash all those years ago. And then I met Brian through Walt, although we all knew each other from that town, Highlands that we grew up in. One very big muse. I also met while working at the stash. No, the wreck. At the wreck, rather. Um, and you guys started hanging out with muse before me. Like I'd left the wreck. You guys started hanging out with muse and telling me like, there's this funny kid who says a lot of wacky stuff and whatnot. Uh, and he was young. He was underage. I remember the first time. That was Tail bait. Yeah, totally. <laughs> that was that was our other selling point. We're like, I didn't think you had to worry about that. We just wanted someone to make you laugh. Yeah, really. it was underage or not? <laughs> well, there was. It was just weird. It was the the notion that where I, where I bumped into his age was at one point we were going to go to a comic book show up in New York, like at the Pento Hotel, the Pennsylvania Hotel, whatever, a Fred Greenberg show. And uh, you were like, let's bring this kid Muse. And I was like, no way, I'm not going to bring across a grinder state lines. across state lines. And that's New Jersey and New York. I don't know this kid. I don't know what you had in mind, but I was just going to go buy some comics. <laughs> I, I was on the fence. <laughs> I was ready to go either way. You that you're into comics. It's always a secret, man. So, like, we couldn't tell anybody. Um, but I remember going, like, I don't want to drive this kid. And Brian was like, well, I'll drive. And then you drove up. And he was like, shotgun. And then me and him sat in the back. And the whole ride up. To the comic book show, he was just full of piss and vinegar and energy and nine nooch, nine all saying little sayings and stuff. The whole ride back, different tone altogether, because there was a dealer there. Yes, there's a dealer there. This guy had like uh, psoriasis or something like that, mild psoriasis, and we called him Blotchy because of it. We didn't know his name, and uh, Muse went and haggled for a comic with him. Like tried to get a comic book kind of lower price, and then the whole ride home, it was you know just, I'm jailbait, right? <laughs> yeah, like you know I'm a minor that crossed the um, Whole ride home, was sweetest just temptation, merciless, <laughs> fucking, just hammering at Muse, hammering at Muse, like just started with like you and Blotchy had sex, didn't you? <laughs> Stuff like that, real mild, and I'm just like, yeah, and then me and Blotchy, and then I was sucking his dick. Like, he was into it at first. But the ride home was like 45 minutes, and even he has a threshold, and he eventually hit it, and he went quiet. Like, it's almost like he shut down like C-3PO. He's just like, and we kept going. These guys especially were just like, and then he's doing this with Blotchy, and then there's cha -ching's another dealer, because he had it change belt with like, like an ice cream change, man yeah. like an ice cream man he's like and cha ching and blotch he got him on both ends man he's airtight well, how old are you again oh fuck it who cares <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, all right oh man i'm sure like i was sitting in the back going like this kid is quiet like he's a human bomb at this point in the beginning he's just like ha 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 but now he's just like leafing through an issue of vigilante not looking up ever you this discounted wanna... comic was not worth all this <laughs> shit you should have never talked to blotchy it's so loud but he ever you just watch him like as soon as like everyone's like ah he's just like <laughs> taking it in and whatnot but it was a trial by fire and he became pretty tight he got off at the newark airport he's like i live here <laughs> <laughs> um but that's how far we go back and then quinn well i met brian first john brian johnson i met through walter but i knew brian from henry hudson as well um but we started hanging a lot more after i started hanging out with walt and then quinn came into the picture when View Askew was up and running. All right, just when before Chasing Amy came before out. Before Chasing Amy. We had done this, uh, we'd done Clerks and we'd done Mall Rats, and then we met Brian in a really cool, unorthodox way. Right. At that point, you had the, the web board going, mm -hmm. which <clears throat> is going today still, and uh, I had gone to the store to get the Mall Rats book, the movie companion, and they were out of it. So I had written you an email. I said, the uh, oh, the guy laughed at me. That's what fucking kicked it. He goes, he goes what do you want that for anyway? That Kevin Smith sucks. I was like, all right. And at the time, we were emailing a little bit back and forth. And I sent you an email. I said, hey, you know, the, the mall on Staten Island, they, I asked the guy, and the comic books got, guy um, sort of gave me shit about it. Right. I don't know why. I don't know. I guess I reported it to you. And then you just sent me the book through the mail and signed it. And you wrote, uh, Brian, uh, give the bookstore dork some shit. And I was fucking, I mean, I was late. I didn't know it was coming. I just got it in the mail. So I was like, all right, I'm going to give that bookstore dork some <laughs> shit. Fuck that guy. So I went to the book, and I brought a tape recorder. 
And uh, I put it down, and I and I, I told him to go fuck himself in so many words, sort of cursed him out, right? And sent you the tape, and then uh, at the time, uh, he just got another email saying, "Hey, you want to come intern for us?" And that was it. And I remember the first day I got there, it was like because I I had only met you once at that point, and then when I got there, I I opened the door to come in the office, and it was what? just you sitting there on the computer. <laughs> big old, big old vibrator in your ass, and I was like, "Is this how this is gonna be?" I was like, "Come in, shut the door." No, and then I interned uh, for about two months. I was twenty, man. I'm thirty five now. That's a f- Isn't that weird. You were a pup, man. Yeah, I couldn't even drink legally then. Legally, right? And then uh, I showed up drunk that first day, and then um, and that was it. And then I uh, interned, and then three months later, I was hired full time. And you got the job simply because, like, the you went into the bookstore where you bought a Mallrats book. That's right. You thought and the fucking gave funny. the dude some shit. It was funny. There's a recording of it. I somebody it. animated it, yeah. Yeah, and there's a little cartoon of it as well. Right, yeah. Somebody, uh, which is like, it's like $10,000 worth of animation. Is it? Is that it's how much it was? Said, yeah, it's, he goes, this would cost $10,000 to animate. And it's like, for, and the, the animation looks pristine and beautiful. And the audio is like just this shitty <laughs> thing of like a 19-year-old me screaming at some guy. I'm like, oh, life's funny. But that was great, man. It, it, it uh, brought me so many doors that's how i met brian and walt and ming of course and here we are and ming i've known you since you were the guy that i reached out to 1996 six late 95 early 96 mall rats had just tanked and somebody in order to make me feel better was just like uh hey man have you seen any of those clerk sites online and, and I was like, what do you mean online? They were like, on the internet. I was like, what the fuck's the internet? <laughs> and I went to the, here in Red Bank, the internet cafe they had. I don't know if it's open anymore. Uh, they had like a few computers set up and like you pay them a couple bucks and they put you online. It was like late 95. And somebody directs me to this, uh, I don't even know how you found it because Google didn't exist. So I don't even know how you did a browser search. It's uh, Yahoo back then. Was it Yahoo? Yahoo, Yahoo was a big, uh, the big I guess that was the one. Yeah. Um, via Yahoo, I guess, because I was like, I asked the dude, I was like, hey man, how do you find, a website and the dude was like you just enter it in here and so i entered clerks and a few things came up and one was the website that ming had done ming had done this kind of website he was in college where were you going uh university of michigan and it was this i'd never seen it before i had no context for it because i'd never really been on the internet and it was weird i remember like it was just graphically beautiful and interesting to me i was like this looks like a magazine but it's but it's on this computer but i uh, it was just weird there were clips you could listen to sound clips pictures uh, screen grabs from the movie and so i reached out to him and i was just like hey man i like this website do you want to build one for for view askew and uh he was like all right yeah he was into it and the message board which is how we met quinn came about because Ming was like, he was like, what do you want to, what do you want on the website? I said, one of the things I want to do is like every once a week, I want to be able to do a Q and A online. And he was like, I'll do you one better, man. I'll give you a message board. You can do a Q and A anytime you want. I was like, what's that? And he explained what it was, message board. And we put that up and that's how kind of the audience grew. That's how we met this cat and whatnot. And it's how we eventually got to the podcasts as well. So Ming, you started a fan site then basically. I did. There were actually a number of clerks fan sites, but uh, I, I knew I could do one better. It laws have been strengthened since then, but Ming would probably be considered a stalker now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what made you even do it? Why would you hey, do boss. the website? You just liked it? Uh, yeah, yeah, I was a big fan of the movie. Uh, I was actually working at a video store at the time. Uh, I felt a big relation to the movie. And uh, then I was snowballing in Michigan. There was nothing to do What's for, a, yeah, nothing else for about to do. two weeks, so I put it together. But you were in college. You should have been all experimental say. and shit. Yeah, I, sh- I had no game back then, though. <laughs> Not <know>. like now. <laughs> yeah, look at me now. <laughs> you were reading comics and getting no puss. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, the uh, and you and I go away as far back as, as him and I, but then... When Walter and I started hanging out, he he was just started hanging out with the chick who grew up to be his wife. Well, I mean, she was growing up at that point. <laughs> a few years later, they get she married. Him and class. <laughs> Child <laughs> by him. But the uh, but at that point, you and I started hanging out a bunch and whatnot. Um, and we've had all sorts of fucking adventures and whatnot. And you guys have both been in a bunch of the flicks that I've done and whatnot. And, and as characters. Uh, Steve, Dave, and the fanboy. And he had this line in Mallrats where uh, at one point uh, you bark at Brody and Walter, you as the guy who's running the comic, comic book store, Comic Toast, and Walter's fanboy character just says, tell him, Steve, Dave, like, you know, backing, backing you up in this fight or something. And it was like a little catchphrase that in our universe world always kind of lived right there. And then when you guys started the podcast, there was a question as to what to call the podcast. And to me, it was obvious. I'm like, it's you guys doing the podcast. Call it Tell Them Steve Dave. And there was an initial 
like kind of like I don't want to do that right because you felt like why it was oh why not because I I was I, I felt the characters were so fringe and we hadn't been in anything for a while I didn't want to come back onto the scene and be like remember us guys but I have to confess it, it has it, it was definitely a good idea it definitely worked out right though recently I, I thought like I'm like the show is called tell him Steve Dave I'm supposed to be the dick that's always telling people and all this cocksucker does is try to neuter me every show <laughs> It so like, what? If I don't, if I'm mad at somebody, no, be nice. If if I have, it, don't it, be mad to the people though who who actually listen though. I got to be mad at everybody. I think <laughs> the rage. <laughs> yeah, it has to come out. If it's only once a week. On but the I, show. I but I but I've heard him be mad. Like I heard you get mad at the post office. Basically, it just seems like your move is whatever he's doing. Just like say to do the opposite. So if he's mad about something, you're like you shouldn't be mad. And if he's right. mad about something, you're like why aren't you outraged by this? Yeah. <laughs> this dude's always like trying to play catch up. Yeah. <laughs> comes in the house like a child of an alcoholic. Comes into the store like not sure how to yeah. how to yeah. deal with dad. His drunk daddy walk. <laughs> How do I handle him Is today? Is he punchy today, Mom? <laughs> um, so the podcast, man, took off, and you guys have been doing it for over a year. Insanely successful. Uh, people love it, and they love the different tone to it. Like people, There are people that are definitely telling Steve Day people who don't like the rest of the podcast at Smodcast, who just listen uh, to your show, man. So you've built like an awesome following in the span of a year. Now you're going to take it to uh, Mornings, uh, it's sitting in for us on Sir. But I think we could take it one step further. I think we could do a TV show. No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think basically we can put together, like, there's a lot of, everyone's doing a TV show, reality TV. I think there's a. With these matinee idol looks. Yes. Of course. I, I think you guys, I've been listening to that podcast forever and you guys are interesting and we're in a comic book store and nobody's ever like done a show in a comic book store. Um, it seemed like a no brainer. I assume there was. I remember like in 96 when we first took over the, the other stash, when we took over the one on, on Mammoth. Um, I was talking to this dude at MTV, man, the guy, what's his name? Fuck. Um, but I was just, uh, he, we were talking about something because we'd done the Jane Bob shorts there. And, um, I was talking about, Hey man, like they'd done the real world. And I was just like, how about a comic book store show? Cause we had sh shot one of the shorts for MTV in the secret stash. And I was like, wouldn't it be cool to like shoot a show like in a comic book store? And it's kind of like clerks, like in as much as like I made that movie about two dudes behind a counter, but this is behind a counter in a comic book store. And you could play like the real world. Like it's just basically people come in a comic book store. People tend to be very erudite or, or opinionated and shit like that. And the dude was like, Oh, I love comics, but nobody's going to watch that. That'll never show. happen. That, never guy happen. Works, that guy works at Surf Taco now. <laughs> no, no. That guy came up with the Jersey Shore. His name, Tony DeSanto was his name. Nice guy. But he was just like, uh, he's going, I would watch it, Kevin. I don't know who, uh, who else would. And so 15 years later, there's enough TV channels in the world and enough programming going on where I, nobody's done this. I'm shocked that nobody's done a, a store, a show set in a comic book store, interacting with the public. What do you um, think the reason is? I don't know, man, because I, I guess for because uh, of that, because of that shame, that's the that people don't want to, don't want to admit it. I don't think it's the shame. I think up until now, nobody's ever really thought of it as viable. Oh, it's subculture. It's where the creepy people go and stuff. You guys can get on TV and show them the comic book stores aren't creepy. <laughs> oh, Just got to take that beard <laughs> off. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> beard. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you, you going to point your finger right at me? It's right um, off the front. But I do. I think it, it could kind of work. Like, basically, if you did one of these deals where, like, cats were coming in, people sell collections here or try to sell them all the time. Some of your best stories, when you listen to Tell Them Steve, Dave, are you interacting with the public? There's that cartoon, the same guy that did that cartoon. You tell that whole story about... Um, dealing comics to the one dude who you actually had to bring oh, the comics yeah, yeah, yeah. to where he lived. And then the guy animated the story about it. It's so amazing. And those stories are fun. I mean, to me, I'm like, just turn a camera on that kind of thing. And, and I don't know. I, I think it's possible. I think you guys could totally pull it off. I found you insanely entertaining. A whole audience online finds you insanely entertaining. I think it's a no brainer to go from one medium to the other. Problem is, Everyone in this room is like a middle-aged man, white man. Thank God for Ming. So he's the closest thing to a girl we got. Yeah, he's a lady boy, <laughs> Ming. On. A little bit. We we got a twofer with Ming. Um, but he we got need... a hair on his body, man. What is hairless? He's hairless. Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty much. Okay, so he's we like got a seal. smooth lady boy. All right, we got five middle-aged dudes. Well, and in your show, we don't count three middle-aged dudes and a lady boy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, you can't put that on TV. So I, for me, it feels like if you're going to show the comic book world, 
don't show them a bunch of dudes. This is what they expect. They look into a comic book store, see this exact view. A bunch of dudes sitting around the table. <laughs> Yelling talk, at each other. <laughs> yeah, and talking about, do the Hulk-Hawk argument. Who's stronger, the Hulk or the Hulk? The what? <laughs> the Hulk, Hulk or thing. the Hulk? Hawk or thing? Hawk or thing? Yeah, who's stronger? No, who, or- but the hawk or hawk? He 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 makes fun of me because I say hawk and hawk, like the who's two Hawk's hawk? hawk man and hawk, <laughs> the Incredible Hawk, the Incredible Why Hawk. Why even ask that question, dude? Fucking Hulk is fucking stronger than a hawk man. <laughs> no way, man! <laughs> you must get so frustrated with that question. No, but not he has he's the mace. It because yeah. it's fucking. But he has the mace, though, the hawk man. And he can fly, so he can be like, <laughs> so can Hulk. All right, thing or thing or and Hulk. Can't the Hulk throw like tractor trailers at people and shit? Like, <laughs> he can dodge him, bro. Yeah. All right, all right, thing or Hulk. Who's stronger? Yeah. Based on past battles or just on in past battles, Hulk. This faux reality you've got going on. <laughs> Superman. <laughs> so, so, so if a based girl on past if a girl battles, asked that question, or what's in my head and heart? <laughs> <laughs> but if a girl asks that same very same question, that's more entertaining. Yes, I think. Yeah, I think. Well, it's not so much of a girl asks that same question. It's like you want to be able to show. In a bikini. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be helpful. The, I mean, uh, girls come into the comic book store. It's just you can't With be expected. With their boyfriends. Yeah, but maybe maybe more would come in if we had some girls, you know, behind the counter. Dude, aren't there some jobs that just demand? Gender. No and garbage age. woman. You don't say garbage women. No, but gender and age. You just feel more comfortable being ser- like if you bring your car to a fucking car to get serviced at the yes. mechanic. You don't want a girl, a young girl working on it. Yeah, but if there was a young girl working at the comic book store, wouldn't you be? You had two choices: go to this comic book store with a bunch of Lloyds like us, or that comic book store has the same product but a girl behind the counter. And I ask, do you have this certain issue? Tee-hee, I don't know. Oh my god! What is this a girl? Did I go back in time to the fifties or something? <laughs> Oh, they don't tee hee nowadays? No, so, now it's all, I'll come in and be like, hey, do you have Superman? She's like, get out of here, fat loser. Girls are very <laughs> forthright well, and straightforward. So that's nothing... what you want your your female employee to say? Well, <laughs> yeah, why not? Why can't I have a female version of the male employee? The oh, emotionally yeah, stunted, sure. socially awkward douchebag. <laughs> yes, yeah, basically you have to find a chick who hasn't gotten laid. Right, it's yeah, many I, I want to see the, the <laughs> first, the show can <laughs> have... Boy. Walt, uh, being challenged by girls coming in, we'll go, we had to go out and find a bunch of girls. Cause he's saying that no, no one, there's not really a female version of the male comic book. Of my book. staff. Of your, of your, of your caliper. My staff. So in, your staff. Oh. He, he's got a hand picked. <laughs> <laughs> Are we taking a Hawk staff. <laughs> no, but staff's bigger than Hawk and Hawk. Do we? Uh, <laughs> I want to see the uh, a competition right there, where there's a, a competition. Buzzer. Yeah, someone comes. You're looking for asks. girl Walt. Yeah, so they have. A, there's two buzzers, yeah. and you have a buzzer. She has a buzzer, and I'm like, who could win in a fight? Who who's been around longer, Hulk like or thing? Translator? <laughs> Hulk, Hulk or thing? Yeah, Hulk. Oh, you think? What Sorry, year did thing. the Hulk? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> All you have to do is give me that yeah. much room. <laughs> who created the Incredible Hulk? In what year? Lee thing. Kirby. Hi, um, Lee Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the answer to. Think, motherfucker. <laughs> I don't think any of you guys have seen a girl in, in decades, man. Every impression of them is just like. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think that be, I think he's on to something, man. I think having the girl Walt would be good. Like, I've met girl but Walt. Already, I see but people Comic come Con in, though, the and they already got the real Walt. Yeah. They don't need it, a female version. No, to but put it's books nice in their to, bag. They might make chicks more comfortable coming in the store. Go, oh, there's a girl here, not just that creepy dude behind the counter. No, no, I mean, yeah. doesn't ever get behind Grouse the counter. <laughs> <laughs> come on. <laughs> Ming's all mad. He's just like, don't bring any girls in. I've got the ladyboy thing. There's a sign, no ladyboys. <laughs> That's how you get on TV, dude. You gotta have girls. Think about it. This is a fucking sausage fest. I mean, look who you're talking to. I'm not against girls. Yeah. Although, a, a female Waltz and I got a fucking girl Walt and a guy Walt giving me shit all the time. <laughs> I don't know. Do the the double barrel Walt, Walt gun. Out there, though. Do you think there is a girl that can be, that has a, as much knowledge about comics? Than well, it's not just I don't think she's ever come out of her house, <laughs> but maybe she, she, she but exists. Just because she knows comics doesn't mean she knows retail, though. She doesn't know how to service the so customer. So you're saying you're the complete package. She doesn't know how to, to seal the deal. She doesn't know how to return shit to Suncoast. 
He's like, I really have a big, I have a hard on right now. Well, that's and not. I want to. I want to sell you this mint condition. Hulk 186. How many people open up with that? I have a hard on right now. <laughs> are you talking about me? Them selling something to me? Well, just there might. Yeah, are they cold ways. hearted? And they, will they get the best deal to get that book cheap? Or are they going to be like? Are they going to fo- oh, like swallow his sob story? So you think that a girl will get all soft? You up? <laughs> you think? <laughs> you think she? You think a girl will be too soft? She'd be like, "All right, you just got kicked out of your house. We had a dude come in, and here. you're gonna be on the street. My mom just died. I need money to sell my comics to, for a funeral. I don't. Even, that doesn't mean anything to me. Really? He's like, I got a refrigerator box at home. <laughs> <laughs> that, is not gonna, that is not going to sway really? how much I offer to do for his collection. I got a kid. He's got a kid. He needs a kidney. I got to sell this Action Comics number one. Action Comics number one? Yeah. Well, then I, I, I don't have that kind. I don't have that kind of money hanging around. I'd have to call you in, and then I wouldn't even tell you about the kidney because I know you'd fucking buckle and be like, "Give him, give him the money. It's a kidney." <laughs> <laughs> so you'd be strong. But I wouldn't store. believe that shit story, though. I would not believe somebody coming off the street would be like, "Tell me." They'll tell me a million sob stories to get the most money out of me. Right. So you really, it's all a scam. You might. Yeah, He's like, you gotta go into that. You gotta have boy. that mode. My boy, Walt, help me. <laughs> like, I've seen pictures of kids before. <laughs> what if he brought the kid in? He, like, threw him on the table and shit. Yeah, the kid's all and yellow and shit. <laughs> He's, like, foaming up the mouth. He's drooling on the He's. <laughs> He's foaming on the action comic number one. Oh, the fuck of comics. This isn't, a, this isn't a charity, though. This is a business. I'm sick, you cynical son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom's dying. <laughs> like, what do you first, what do you see her duties, though, being then a female employee? Um, Get us lunch? Whoa. I mean, what is, like... My God. Unless she's, <laughs> I don't know. I really don't see what she can do. What she can do other than be in front of the camera then for a reality. Let show. me put it this way: I ran both stores at yes. one point or another. I think there's probably tons of girls out there that would be better than me at both customer service no and knowledge. Right. So that's if you trust me. <laughs> that's true, Brian. But that store's store. closed. Case point. in point. Good point. You did run it into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe a girl wouldn't have. <laughs> a girl would be nurturing. Girls are always kind of nurturing, man. A girl mm-hmm. would like think of things to do in here that maybe we're not thinking. All we think with is our dicks. If we had someone without a dick. They'd do some different thinking in here. Maybe all of a sudden we'd be seeing things in a different way. Maybe some shit we're not, I don't know, approaching or because we don't have a distaff voice, if you will. Maybe there's some girl books out there that are, are hot numbers right now that you don't I'll think. carry a girl book if it means sales. That's that's not But the maybe issue. you don't know it's sale, selling those so well because you don't know that there's a th- million girls out there that are like, oh, my gosh, I wish I could find that um, – Cherry Hawk Pop Tart Hawk. number six. <laughs> exactly. But she's like, I know what the girls. <laughs> she's like, on girl, girlread.com, I've been reading that a lot of people want Hawk vs. Hawk number six. <laughs> you wouldn't know that because you wouldn't be reading Girl vs. Girl, but she would be. Case in point, let's get a check. <laughs> I get, so well, when, <laughs> when he makes sense, hey, you gotta listen, man. It's a fairly valid argument. I think it might be interesting at the very least. It's worth a shot. We've had tons of dudes. We've never had a chick come in here. Not tons of dudes, but we've had dudes on the, on the employee. We've never had a woman. Let's see what a girl will do here. Or a lady. Will you allow it for a test? For a week? It's Kevin's story. We allow it if Kev says no. you have to. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's your story. It's true. If you were yeah. just like, my foot down, I wouldn't do it because I don't have to be here. You were here every day. All right, let's not do it. <laughs> well, we got to try. <laughs> 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 All right, I rephrase no, that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's worth a shot. At the very least, look, here. here's how... The, Thing about Walt is you can't approach Walt with like, why not? It's progressive. Let's do this. Let's mm-hmm. let's throw a girl into the mix. You have to approach it on a business level. Walt looks at this store as his very own and has managed it like his own from the jump. So think about it like this: if we got a chick in the store and we got on TV, then people on TV see the exactly. store, and more people come to the store, and that makes you happy. So the so the minute minute that. We're not on the TV anymore. She's gone. <laughs> there you go. Yes, that's right. Yeah, okay. But if she's a ticket to ride, if you will, to TV, that that might be worth it alone. Even if she was just sitting there like, or that dude, <laughs> dude, 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 dude. <laughs> <laughs> or tee hee hee hee. All right. 
You give it a shot? Yes. Well, wait a sec. Wait a sec. I'm waiting. <laughs> so what if on TV, <laughs> I want to ask you just said yes. You're like, no, no, no. You're like, wait, Walt, don't me, say yes. Let me bolster what my if? case. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is after the thing. What if the TV's gone? Right. But in that span of, let's say it was a month. She's won his heart. All of a sudden, she there was like a hun- there was 100 girls a week coming in more than there has been in the last 10 Looking years. Hulk versus Hulk like, you're like, well, there's like, there's 100 more people coming in, um, females. Definitely, yeah. That, that, then, money, then you would keep money it around. Talks, yeah. And All then right. Kevin calls and he's like, Mike's got to go then. Uh, money talks. <laughs> <laughs> Mike walks. <laughs> no, nobody goes. We don't get rid of anybody. We just add to the mix. Right. It's okay. also a good thing to uh, to throw in this economy where everyone's losing jobs. Be like, we're the only comic book store in town <laughs> that's hiring. Come on in. I, it might be worth it. I think it'd be kind of cool. How many people are here on a daily basis regularly? Me and Mike. That's it. Just you and Zapsick. You and Mike Zapsick. Then we got Sunday Jeff on Sunday and Ming's. Why is Sunday Jeff called Sunday? He work, only works on Sunday. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, okay, so it's just you three boys. Yes, and Ming. It's like a sitcom, dude. See, this is even better, man. It sounds like a sitcom. It's like, into these three boys' lives come a sexy comic chick. She may not be sexy, but a comic chick. It's going to be like... Um, into these three married guys' lives. <laughs> won't even be able to look her in the eyes. Do you think that'll be weird? Do you think you'll be able to look at her right in the eyes, or do you think you'll do the whole downcast thing? Be like, that's fine. Whatever you want to do. Know. What if I she's sassy? In the eyes. What if she's sassy? And yeah, you're what like, if she's hey, like, hey, hey, bag and board that shit. She's like, fuck you, yeah, bitch. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, what if she... Wait a minute. She's got to know I'm the boss. <laughs> <laughs> what I say goes. Or any, or what she's if she looks boss. at you as the boss like Mel was the boss at Mel's Diner, and she's like in like an hour. Oh, she's like, she's my grits. She's constantly telling you to kiss your grits. Kiss, yeah. She's like, kiss my grits. Well, at least if we're gonna hire a girl, at least let me hire one that's going to be subservient. Good luck, man. I'll be your Vera. What if she was like uh, sassy, like uh, Kathy Griffin? Don't know that. <laughs> that <red> <laughs> Kathy Griffin. What if she was sassy, like the maid in the Jeffersons? Yeah, man, Florence. Uh, she respected Mr. Brady. I'll take that. Mr. Brady Ooh. Jefferson. Would he cross over? No, not not. Oh, no. No. <laughs> you think of that crossover episode, the Brady watching the, the Jeffersons, Jeffersons met. <laughs> 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 in, who was it? The the. The maid in the Brady's. Who Alice. Was the, who was Alice. Alice. Alice was the maid in the Brady's. Okay. So you're saying but Alice, Alice was very nice. She'll take an Alice. Alice. Yeah. What if she came in, but she was really awesome at her job, and she brought in a lot of customers, but she had to walk around, she walked around with like a, a tank top on, and her nipples were showing. Oh. But we will have, I would beg we will for a have a dress, dress code. code. Yes. What's the dress code going to be? Booty shorts and a tank wear, top. She can't wear shorts, short shorts. She can't wear anything inappropriate because we have kids coming in here. Oh, good Lord. Really? So is it the Taliban of comic book stores? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, she can't wear shorts. She's got her head covered. She'll be wearing a burka when she'll back burka. <laughs> Comes right over her head. What's or- with the ankles, bitch? <laughs> 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 trying to sex up my store? <laughs> <laughs> you get a fall with her. Maybe have her dress up in costume. She'll, like, dress up as... Wonder Woman. What if she's but got the my full figure, suit? Though. That's fine. Yeah. That'd be even better. She could dress up as <laughs> like Batman. Like, what if she comes in as Batman? Doesn't that defeat the whole TV thing? Though? No, no. Because it's no. It's all about sales. It's all about money. So tune in but to see come a see the female show. Of him. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like, yeah, it's, it's fine. <laughs> no, because you'll see her shape and stuff, and it will just be like the facial show. Where's so you can't remote? see her face. What is she wearing? <laughs> She's wearing like a Batman ears oh, or a okay. Batman cape and she's like, she swings in and shit, maybe on a zip line. <laughs> and then the next day she comes a lot in. Of added as her, <laughs> she comes in as Hawkman the next day. So she just has the bird mask, but her face is cut open and she has a mace. The face is the, always cut open. We'll go with that. Yeah. The face is always cut open, but she's in costume all the time. If she was to, if she wanted to, if she was to agree to wear a costume every day, if as long as it was a tasteful costume, I wouldn't have a problem yeah. with that. But what if she had a, what if she had a, you had to come stay after work each day and she's like, I'm going to try in this new outfit, but well, tell me what you think. Uh, she had to stay an extra day, hour uh, after I, de- I defer that to one of my, to my staff. 
No, but you have to pick. She's not going to tell me this. She's not going to dictate that. to you're me. The guy. I'm fucking I'm serious do. now about this. You're the guy, <laughs> you're the guy we bring so that somebody's just like, uh, hey, man, this ain't that kind of joint. Joint? <laughs> like, that's, that's you. You're sitting there asking real questions. Is the face like, cut out? What if this girl has no face, Walter? <laughs> I want to know about that. This is for real. Dude, my fucking name's on the store too, bro. I want to know. That's true, man. It is Jay and Silent Bob's secret stash. So you, do you have a big say? Go ahead. I want to know. Well, I'm asked. I'm, I mean, I found out now. So costumes. Costumes are cool. And but you want after after work is not. Would you trust Brian to stay afterwards though, and try and let. Like leaving Brian alone with some That's girl true. in the outfit. You can open yourself up to a lot of litigation, though, with sexual harassment with these guys. Mm. What do you mean? Why? 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 Just don't sexually harass anybody. You're Again, looking at it's me? 2011, dude. What are you, Clarence <laughs> Thomas? Oh, him? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you, you can't. You got to be nice. Wait, let's cut this and everyone say. Let's define what nice is right now. Let's get a sexually harass her. It's not going to be Ming. It's going to be fucking <laughs> Ming, you're out. Yeah. <laughs> Ming's going to be putting her in heels and shit, exactly. and slobbering, like, cornering her in the basement. Louboutins are awesome. Oh, I know they think I'm a lady boy upstairs down here. I'm all man, girl. <laughs> that's that's Ming, harassment. You're scaring me. That's harassment? <laughs> I don't Is think that so. Harassment? I don't think so. That's a good question, though. Do you get the sole decision? Do we have any input in this? And why? Who, do we, who, who we hire? Yeah. I think we should get some kind of say. Mm-hmm. I'm a good judge of character. That's not what you're going to be judging, dude. Yeah. Whoa. He's going to be judging the figure. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I'm not going to be doing that. Come on, I'm, I'm married. All right, so how about we did, we, how about we brief, we each bring two to the table and then we'll allow Kevin to make the final decision. Two candidates. I got Just like the Pam. GOP and the Dems and Kev will make the decision. I want no part of this. I'm married. I don't want to get in trouble. You guys deal with it. <laughs> it's up to you. I'll choose. I don't think it's You're difficult. Too. I think basically you have a bunch of girls come into the place. Yes. Me and Quinn. And you just sit down and bachelors. you, you <laughs> basically talk to them, like basically uh, interview them. What are they like? A, they got to have knowledge. Yeah, man. I mean, I, we've never had a hiring process in the store. You just meet a bunch of cats, put out an ad and say, hey, man. Who has found hey, well, his, his hiring process, he's got to know him for 10 fucking years first. I know. We're going to have to <laughs> volume that up a little bit, Walt. Speed it up. Jeff he was a customer, he's a customer for, for 10 years. <laughs> A ball, him and Zach no, he wasn't for no. ten years. He, he was a, year, a customer for like two years, but I could just see Sorry, that Sunday, he was the Jeff? perfect man. Yeah. And how about Zapkick? Uh, he was a, he was a customer for like five years. He was a customer. Then he worked at website, and then he worked here. So basically, I think you get a. a <clears throat> there's like a seven year initiation. Hold period. Like we got, basically, you just get a bunch of people to come in, man, boys and girls, boys. <laughs> basically, you get a bunch of <laughs> bunch of people to come in, guys, girls. And whoever's great, best for the job, take it, but lean towards the chick. There. So <laughs> so hard I get final decision. I think it should be up to you. You spend the most time here. I don't here. think so. I think it should be up to me. No, because you'll just, you will be like, uh, which one? He's been bitching at me for a year and a half on the Which one will let me podcast. talk about my wiener out loud? So mm-hmm. you, no, <laughs> that's not <laughs> the comic book story. Right. He's the guy that deals with, he deals with the public on a regular basis. He's the dude who should have the final say. And it's about finding someone that fits his personality, some a chick that he could look right in the eye. Mm-hmm. Okay, an a amalgam of all cake. of us. Yeah, man, a chick that has a little be a little piece of all of us, kind of exactly. not in her because that'd be mm-hmm. weird, but like <laughs> aspects of our personality to her or the things we like, man, like kind of a uh, an amazo, if you will, exactly, like an ama- a Justice League amazo, a girl Walt Zapsick and Sunday Jeff. What a thrill that'll be. <laughs> 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 Guys are all hot and wet, right? Oh, man. It's like a dream come true. I think my butthole lips could get so moist. <laughs> Thinking of that. I don't know how you pick, but I think you should pick. Figure out what you base it on. I'm sure the qualifications will all be there. But ultimately, like, if it come, what if it comes down to a tie? What if you have two people who are really good at the position, like two people you want to hire? come up with a game or something like that maybe make them figure it out that way i don't know but start thinking about tv man because it's time for telling steve dave to take it from podcast to television you'd be the first podcast tv show ever you can't count that ricky gervais cartoon that was never a podcast i'm not counting him don't uh, i won't don't you'd be the first um that would it, it would be astounding i think it's worth a shot why not what else are we doing tell him steve dave <laughs>
Yeah, I'm gonna